Howdy folks, welcome back. So now we've got all of our menus in place and they're all functional, so let's do some bug smashing. So right now we can do, we can attack, but if we let go of the guard button, mid attack, she'll start skating around. Same thing as if we're casting. So we'll fix that real quick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go find my, oh, third person character, right click and open that blueprint. I can get rid of that now. Uh, what is this? Oh, this is our fast travel system. Let's fix that first. Uh, we need to drag out our fast travel menu reference and plug that in. And we need to create a boolean real quick called FT menu open question mark because when we press the button we don't want to open multiple instances of this so false and we hit FT menu open hook it there and at the very end of all of this we will set that to true now to make sure it doesn't lock our character unable to open the menu again we'll go find this double click and open that up and on the close button, we'll scroll down and view its uh, its function. And I'm going to drag off my player reference. Get FT, not get, set FT menu open and set that back to false. So that'll, what? Oh, if that happens, that just means I forgot to compile this one first. So it was trying to pull something that it hadn't compiled and put in yet. Okay. So now we'll, that'll fix that. Let's box select all that. And just commented it out as fast travel system. Okay. Now in guard mode, this is the function we don't want to happen if our character is mid attack or mid cast. So we're going to go to our player booleans and find get 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 equipping and sheath weapon get attacking and get casting we're gonna add a branch and using control and dragging we're gonna hook it hook the released to this first branch first this yeah <laughs> this first branch first we're going to drag off the first one and type in OR. We'll add this, we'll click this add pin a few times to make sure that it has enough room for everything. And we're going to check all of these. So if any of, if this is going or this is going or this is going, it won't fire off because if these are true, we don't want it to do anything. But if they are all false, then we will hook straight into that. And let's check that out real quick, just to make sure I'm not remembering wrong. So yeah, I let go of the mouse button. And I still let go of the mouse button. Right, right, right. Okay. Off true. Retriggerable delay. Which I'm going to drop down below. Set it to about 0 0.01, and then just feed it back straight into that branch. Not exactly the prettiest way of doing it, but it has a good little look to it, I guess. But that'll work. So, now let's test it out again. Pull my weapon out. I let go, and then after she's done attacking, good to go again. Check casting. Yep. Good deal. Alright, so there was something else. Oh, this has been bugging me the entire time. This fireball spell, when it explodes, that's not the effect it should have. I think when I set that one up, I couldn't find the right one. So we'll go to our magic, open up our fireball spell, and down here on the spawn emitter, we just want to type in explosion and get this. 
get the um, let me explain um, explosion the one from the starter content that's the one you want because that one looks so much better more like a fireball really hmm something else we want to update real quick is we want to go to each of our actually we're going to go to our fast travel portals and we're going to open up all of them because right here on the component begin overlap on the player detector when we're setting that we found it we don't want it to reference the pl to check against the player reference we want it to check against our interact radius otherwise when this collision interacts with that collision, it'll ref it'll uh, recognize it as the player, and it'll give you a much wider range of you know finding them. So you don't want that. But we do have that interact radius that we spawn on our character. So once those interact, that would be a good time. So I'm just gonna open up all of them, remove the player reference and put in the interact radius and make sure you compile these so interact radius one more interact radius so now if we check that out Normally it would have spawned up right now, but what happened there? Spawn interact radius, there we go. It's doing it, why ain't it? Let's browse to here. So yeah, it's attached to our character. Try it that way. Maybe if I pull the one directly from the player, that's what it's supposed to do. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So it's still the interact radius. You just um, so pull the player ref out a little bit and get the interact radius that's been attached to him, and then run it in. So, player F, interact, radius, then hook it up. My bad. Sorry about that, everybody. Interact, radius, plug that in, and one more. Went to go bug smashing, ended up creating more bugs. <laughs> Okay. Let's see. Let's just double check that you can't float around while you're putting your sword away. Nope. Good deal. So, yeah, that's a lot better. So, alright, oh wait, 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 one more thing we'll do together is go back to interact radius and set hidden in game. Otherwise you got that thing floating around your feet. So, alright, well, thanks for stopping by. And in the next one we'll start um, adding sound effects. When our character jumps, she'll hoot and all that. So, catch you later.